I'm gonna conclude this video with a bonus tip, which is gonna allow you to secure continuous income from your theme page. So make sure you stay tuned for that. Welcome back to my channel. This video is all about how you can create a theme page step by step and how you can be making money from it as your side hustle. If you haven't already checked out my part one to this video where I give you an overview of theme pages, the pros, the cons, that kind of stuff, then please check it out. If you have already watched that, then carry on watching. I'm hoping this video is gonna be really, really useful to anyone who wants to create a theme page. If you're interested in these sorts of videos around making money and you know finding yourself in the world of Instagram and social media, then please subscribe to my channel. It will help me out a lot. As I mentioned, um, if you're watching this video, I'm hoping it's because you've already watched part one, which talks about what theme pages are, how you can utilize them, that kind of stuff. So I'm not gonna waste your time and talk about what theme pages are in this video. I'm just gonna get straight to the point and talk about how you can actually create one. The first step to creating a theme page is picking a good theme. Now, you might be thinking, oh, okay, theme pages, let's think about the most common niches like fashion, um, interior, tech. There's so many more niches out there that you probably have no idea about. I certainly didn't have any idea about them. Um, you know, animals is a super popular niche, dogs, cats, etc. cetera. Um, but then yeah, there's also the ones around property, business, motivational quotes. There's so, so, so many. What you want to do is pick a niche which you are interested in because otherwise this whole process will become incredibly tedious. So if you're interested in fashion and you follow a lot of influencers, then that is the niche for you. If you're interested in interior design, then that is the niche for you. So really just go with what you're already interested in because it's gonna make the whole process a hell of a lot easier and more enjoyable. The second thing you wanna do once you've picked a theme is create the page. And there's a few things which go into this. So there's picking a name. You wanna pick a name which is catchy, which is short and which is relevant to what your theme is. This is gonna be harder than it sounds because a lot of the names on Instagram, at least the good ones, are gone. But, you know, let's have an abundance mindset. There's still plenty of names for you to choose. If you need any help with picking a name, I recommend checking out this video where I talk about how you can choose a brand name and I talk about loads of different methods um, that you can use. So I recommend watching that video and having a go. Once you've picked your name, it's time to create your account. You don't wanna do the, the classic trap of, adding loads of characters to the name or numbers afterwards because you're desperate to get this name and the original version's already been used. You don't wanna do that because all of those extra fluffy bits make it harder for people to remember. You wanna go back to the drawing board and pick something else which is gonna be available. So it's not an easy task. It's gonna take a little while, but it'll be super worth it. So once you've created your page, you then need to write a bio. I recommend it's catchy. It includes a call to action in it and it communicates your tone of voice, which, a lot of people think it's only for brand pages, but it's important for any kind of Instagram page. If you're gonna be sharing funny content, then your caption should be somewhat amusing. If you're gonna be sharing motivational content, then your captions should be motivational. <laughs> Just bear that in mind and make sure that every part of your Instagram is super aligned. And that also applies to your profile photo. So obviously you're gonna to wanna to pick a profile pick which is relevant to your theme. If it's a cat page, pick a cat. If it's a house page, pick a house. If you wanna be really fancy and create a logo, then go for it. Um, there's a really cool uh, program called Canva, which I'll link to below, which you can use, or you can use someone from Fiverr and recruit someone to create a logo for you. I don't think it's completely necessary. It might be something you want to look at further down the line, but I'm just gonna, I'm gonna put it out there in case you're super extra like I am and you want to do it now. <laughs> okay, so now that you've got your page, super exciting, you're ready to actually start posting content. But before you do that, you've got to find the content. And um, this, you might think this is gonna be easier than it actually is. It's, there's more to it than just finding any content what's related to your niche and posting on your channel. Unfortunately, there's a bit more work what goes into it. The key thing here is that you need to find good performing content. Like that is the key. Um, and the, how you do that is by looking at the engagement of the different content that you're finding on different channels. Channels. So you basically want to go on to another theme page or go on to an influencer page within your niche, look through their photos and find the photos which have been engaged in with the most out of all the others. So if an influencer usually racks up about a thousand likes per photo and then they've got a few photos on there which have 20,000 likes, those are the photos that you're going to want to repost. <laughs> Um, one key tip which I have for you on this is consider using websites like Planoly or Later, which I'll put, I'll put links to in my description. These websites allow you to pre-schedule your content. So basically you can source loads of really well-performing content and post 
schedule two posts per day for a week using these platforms and they will post automatically without you having to do anything. So I preach using these all the time because it's an incredibly valuable tool and it really helps me automate your entire theme page. The thing what I'd recommend for this is that you don't want to be doing it too far out in advance. So you don't want to be scheduling two months worth of content um, because a trick to the theme pages is that the content you'll be posting needs to be relevant. And you'll probably know this just by being an Instagram user. Um, there are trends and one week you might see some really funny com um, content following a certain trend and then you might not ever see that content again. Or if you do, you see it and you think, oh, it's a bit old, <laughs> it's a bit late. Um, so there's, there's a bit of a time element to theme pages. Which another thing to be aware of is that you should be posting regularly. <laughs> These people are following your theme pages because they are promised regular content on a specific theme. You also don't have the excuse that you need to create content because you are literally reposting other people's content. So there is a real expectation that you're gonna be posting on a regular basis. So you wanna make sure that you're posting every day if you can, potentially multiple times a day, um, in order, especially in the beginning when you're trying to rack up your followers. So you've got your content, you've scheduled it, you're posting on a regular basis. What you need to make sure that you do is make sure you've got a good understanding of Instagram's algorithm and how the platform in general works. I've recorded a video where I talk about um, how you get to your first 1,000 followers on Instagram. I'll link it up there. Um, if you're not familiar with Instagram, I recommend giving that video a watch. Or even if you are familiar and you just have never grown an account before, for reference, for anyone who doesn't know me, um, I do have four Instagram accounts, four Instagram accounts, um, which are all small accounts, but they range between like a couple of thousand and like 8,000 odd followers. So um, whilst I'm not a macro influencer, um, I can tell you a little bit about how you can get to your first thousand followers and how you can work with Instagram's algorithm. Um, so I recommend giving that video a watch if you're not familiar. But the main things that you need to remember is that you need to be on the site engaging with people on a regular basis. You need to be responding to the comments under your photos. You need to be posting on a regular basis and you need to be looking at your insights. So that means that your page should be a business or creator page. Super important. Okay, let's get to the good stuff, the money. Um, before we get into the money, just so you know where I'm getting these numbers from and how I know this stuff, um, I own two boutiques and as part of running these boutiques, I work with theme pages on a regular basis for them to post and shout out my brand and my content. So I have a little bit of knowledge about how much fashion theme pages charge um, and based off my research, I do believe that a lot of other theme pages in different niches charge similar amounts, right? So I'm actually gonna give you a sneak peek um, into how much some of them charge. As you can see from my lovely graphic over here, um, the amounts that they charge massively vary. So in case you don't know this, cause you've not watched part one of my video, the method in which people make money from theme pages is by offering shout outs to different brands and by charging for them. So similar to how influencer marketing works um, in the sense that a brand will partner with a theme page and be like, hey, can you shout out my products? Um, this is how much I'm willing to pay you for this shout out and that's how you make your money. You make significantly less money on these shout outs than you would if you had an influencer account. And I talk a bit about why that is in part one of this video, but in a nutshell, it's because when a brand partners with an inf influencer, they are purchasing their influence and they're also purchasing the content they're gonna create. It's not just a shout out. So that's why they get away with charging a lot more. In terms of how much you should be charging, it, it varies quite a bit. I would recommend that if you are a small account, you're just getting started. So maybe you've got between 1,000 to 20,000 followers. I wouldn't recommend charging anything more than 10 pounds for a shout out. Um, and maybe that's 15 to 20 pounds for a permanent post. Um, and then you can increase your prices as you get a higher following. Okay, so let's talk a bit about how you actually find these brands um, and actually get them to pay you money for a shout out. The chances are, if you're a fairly big account, a lot of these brands are gonna find you. So that's job done. However, if you're not a big account, or if you don't really feel like the offers are flooding in, then you might need to roll up your sleeves a bit and actually go out and get those deals yourself. I'm an advocate for this, 
Don't wait for others to come to you, go and get them. <laughs> so one of the ways that you can do this is by finding other pages which are similar to you and have a similar niche, similar follow account, and looking through their content to find shout outs that they have done. This basically allows you to find brands who are in market for shout outs. If I'm using a theme page to shout out my products and then another theme page, which is similar to that one, similar stats, approaches me for a shout out, I'm probably going to also use them because they've realised that actually I've got a little bit of money to spend on these types of promos and I'm willing to work with shout out pages. So it's, it's a no brainer. I would avoid any brands who are huge. So we're talking about like your big fast fashion brands or your big tech companies like your Sony and your Samsung aren't going to use you for a shout out it's not gonna happen. Misguided and Zara, they're not gonna use you for a shout out. <laughs> they're gonna use influencers. It's the smaller brands, um, which are either just starting or which haven't amassed a huge following yet. Those are the ones which are gonna be trying to get their name out there. And those are the ones which are gonna be using shout out pages. Once you've found these pages, it's time to send them a cheeky DM. The trick I find with this is not to go in super hard and be like, hey, do you wanna buy a shout out? This is how much I'm charging. Try to go in with, a, with the initial soft sell message where you're basically saying, hi, would you be interested in purchasing a shout out on our page? Our engagement rate is this. Um, we have X amount of followers and this is how many accounts we reach per post on average. If you can screenshot some of your insights to prove this, even better. Um, but I 100% recommend going in without mentioning prices yet, but mentioning your stats because that's what they're going to be looking at. So if you if you're upfront and you have great stats, lead with that and you're gonna gain their interest. Once they've responded to you, that's where you can start conversations around pricing. I recommend being flexible and being willing to, willing to negotiate. A good tip if you do feel like you need to duck your prices is by offering a batch deal. And by that, I just mean, okay, so someone, you want someone to pay 20 pounds for one shout out, but they wanna pay you 15. Why don't you say, okay, fine, I'll do you two shout outs for 30. Okay, so I mentioned a bonus tip earlier in this video, which is going to help you to continuously earn money from your theme pages. And how you're going to do that is by building a relationship with the brands that you're working with so that they continue to come back to you. I, can, I know exactly how to do this because theme pages do this with me and it works. I keep on coming back to them. <laughs> so this is basically how you do it. The first thing you want to do is once you've worked with a brand, you want to share the results. So you want to screenshot your insights and send it over to them and be like, hi, Thank you so much for working with me. This is the results of your post. I hope we can go work together again soon. That shows transparency for one. If you've done all the other tips that I've mentioned before, which means you've got a valuable audience, the chances are your stats are gonna be pretty impressive. So that's something I 100% recommend. But the key thing which I recommend, and a lot of people don't talk about this, is requesting a custom discount code from the brand that you're working with. So what I basically mean by this is, when I work with shout out pages now, I create a discount code which has it usually has their name in it. So let's say the shout out page is called Fashion 101. My discount code will be Fashion 101 and it will give people 10% off their products. So when Fashion 101 promotes my products and posts the shout out, in the copy they'll say get 10% off by using code Fashion 101. What this means is I can track how many sales have been made through that one shout out. And what you what you need to realize is that brands, regardless of whether or not they've given you a bespoke code, they're, tr they're always gonna be trying to track what the effects are of that shout out anyway. But usually how they do it is by staggering the shout outs, by keeping a, a spreadsheet of when the shout outs are gonna be, and then looking at if there's been an increase in sales when you made your shout out. Whilst this method gives you some idea of how successful your shout out has been, it does not tell you definitively how many sales you've made as a result of that shout out. But a unique discount code will do that for you. And when I've done this in the past, I've been able to literally see, say I've worked with 10 theme pages, they've all had their own unique codes. Some pages which have far more followers than others have only generated two sales, whereas other pages which might only have 50,000 followers have generated like 12. So therefore, because I now have this information, I will go back to that theme page and I will repeatedly work with them. And they end up getting almost like a customer for life because I know their shout outs work. Um, so that is a little bonus tip for you from a brand's point of view. I 100% recommend asking for one of those codes. And if they ask why, then explain, because I want to give my followers a discount, but also because I want you to be able to see the effects of this shout out. And they'll appreciate it. 
it just shows transparency. Okay, that concludes my video. I really hope this was useful to you. If you are creating a, a theme page, then honestly, best of luck. If you're creating a fashion theme page and hit me up, I might wanna do a, a shout out for one of my brands. Um, but if not, and you just wanted to have a little bit of a nose about how these works, then yeah, I hope this was informative. If you're interested in these type of videos, please subscribe to my channel. I release content every Sunday. So I will see you next week.